in the last stream, we were working on setting up this system over here, this lithium duplication system, which I have left running between streams for quite a while, quite a few hours. Uh, this thing has been chugging along. Right now, it's not working. We'll get to the reason for that shortly. But uh, up here, you'll see that we have 171,000 lithium element available to us, which is going to be more than enough. You might also notice that we have a staggering number of eggs available to us as well. That is because this draw right here has filled up with 2,048 eggs. This draw up here has also filled up with 2,048 eggs. And now all the excess eggs are just kind of sitting around on the floor, which is definitely going to cause quite a bit of lag if we don't take care of it. And so real quick here, I'm just going to grab one of the seven void upgrades that we already have in the system. And if we just dump that into here, that should pick up all of the excess eggs and just delete them, getting rid of that extra leg. Now, the reason that this system has stopped working is that, as I have mentioned many times before, the alchemistry mod is not very good in this version of Minecraft for automation, specifically. That is because, for whatever reason, whenever I close the game and reopen the game, these combiners here don't stick to their locked recipe. So last stream, I opened it up, and I told it to make cellulose, and I locked it to that recipe, but you'll see that it's no longer locked. It doesn't say lock recipe. I've not touched this since the end of the last stream, but whenever I close and reopen, it decides to just make whatever element it wants. Last, uh, between streams, I opened up the game once, and what element did it decide to make? We have like a rogue, this right here, this acid, is what it decided to make, and right now, it's decided to make this stuff right here, just another random concoction of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which is not ideal. Uh, real quick, I do need to go ahead and lock the recipe once again, to cellulose and uh, you'll see it causes even more problems because the thing it was trying to make doesn't have the perfect proportions that cellulose has and so we end up backing up on things like oxygen here when we actually need some hydrogen let me try and make sure is that making cellulose it is okay so can i lock this to cellulose please hopefully that's not going to be too much of a problem for us because i don't think we're going to need to uh, to rely on this for too much longer and again to be fair already um, 171,000 lithium is probably more than enough, but we do need yet more blaze cakes because now we need to stop making lithium and we need to start making some of the other elements. Speaking of which, between streams, I have received an, an update from the pank developer themselves. They sent me a config file and that config file just lowered the number of items required to make the ultimate singularity. So now we only need 500 of every single item here as opposed to 10,000. I didn't know that the config file was gonna do this. I thought it was only gonna tweak a few of these uh, and not all of them. It wouldn't have been a huge deal. I, I think it's fine, I'm gonna stick with it because going, the difference between 500 and 10,000 is just a matter of time or maybe a matter of scale, just putting down more of the same machines and, uh, and doing that is just gonna be tedious anyway. But um, it's really just the encrypted ingots. We do have a few thousand in encrypted ingots now. We have got 13,950. That's still not the full 50,000 that we would have needed. Again, getting 50,000 wouldn't have been too difficult. It would just have been a case of doing more of what we've already done, right? Getting multiple more of these deployers, getting multiple more of these deployers, like setting up, you know, four, five, ten rows of these deployers here, all producing stone, all making the ore, all smelting the ore to try and get that in a reasonable period of time. As for all of these, the good news is that most of these singularities use the same elements. So oxygen is the first one that requires oxygen, right? Next up is ammonia. Ammonia is made with nitrogen and hydrogen. Following on from that, you have propane, which is carbon and hydrogen. And then my, my point here is that outside of a few of these, like mercury, that are kind of dedicated individual elements, most of the singularities here are made from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So if you can get a good supply of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, then you can make most of these singularities. Um, hydrogen's right there. Ethane is carbon and hydrogen. Uh, we've got silicon dioxide, which is not carbon and hydrogen, but it is oxygen and silicon. And also you can get silicon dioxide from cobblestone. So getting uh, 50,000 silicon dioxide wouldn't have been too difficult either. Water is obviously hydrogen and oxygen. Chlorine is not hydrogen and oxygen, but it does lead me to how I'm going to get all of the hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon that we're going to use to make all of these singularities. And that is utilizing the best block that modern Minecraft has ever uh, devised. And that block, of course, is snet. So my plan here, chat, is to kind of abuse the fact that you can make a staggering amount of cactus incredibly quickly utilizing snet. If we go ahead, and I, don't, I just took away that, uh, that fence post there, but if we go ahead and put this back down here, what we can do here is we can, of course, put down a cactus like this, and the snad grows that cactus incredibly quickly. If we combine this with the advanced item collector, the one that we have 
uh, over here, this guy. If we make a second one of those, the advanced item collector has a massive area that it can cover. Let me see if I can craft one of these real quick here. Once again, we need a regular item collector, and then we just need to upgrade that to an advanced item collector. We can have our system craft the Eye of Ender for us. But uh, if we put this down somewhere and we look at its range, we can bump the range here in the X and Z directions to seven by seven by, uh, sorry, to 15 by 15, which gives us a pretty huge range. And if we click uh, show range here, I'll keep showing us it, a pretty big range within which we can put the cactus. And so if we set up a crisscross pattern here of SNAD, put cactus on every single one of those, and then make sure that we have an oak fence or something equivalent, any block will do one block above in the uh, the center blocks, that will begin to produce a staggering amount of cactus for us. All of that cactus can be collected by the advanced item collector, deposited into a drawer, and uh, I'm gonna temporarily destroy this so we don't get too much cactus on the floor here, but every single piece of cactus can then be run through a dissolver to get us cellulose, which is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, nitrate, which is nitrogen and oxygen, and sucrose, which is even more carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So every single piece of cactus that we get gives us five oxygen, another three oxygen, that's eight oxygen, plus 11, that gets us 19 oxygen, plus 22, 32 hydrogen, one nitrogen, and 18 carbon. That's a ton of all four of those like key ingredients from just cactus. And we can get so much of it so quickly, and then we can use all of that to get oxygen, ammonia, propane, not mercury, not neon, cellulose, uh, not fluorite, not phosphorus, that's another one that's individual, uh, caffeine is just a C, H, N, and O, uh, methane is just CH as well. Argon is different. Encrypted, we have. Krypton is also different. Sucrose, again, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Ethane is carbon and hydrogen. Hydrogen is just hydrogen. Uh, helium is different. Silicon dioxide is cobblestone. Protein, we're going to get from mob drops, which we should have a fair number of. Carbon is obviously carbon. Sulfur, we can get from a simulation block. That's another thing. Most of the ones that we can't get from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, we can get from some kind of simulation block. Something like uh, neon, which we saw up here. Neon, we've not got before, but we can get using lime simulation blocks. So once we have one neon, we can use one neon to make the lime simulation block and then just repeat that process. That is going to require a ton of simulation block, but what we can do is we can bring the builder uh, in quarry mode over from the mining dimension, stick that down here in the overworld, and then just tell it to dig out a giant area full of simulation block until we have more than enough to get all of the uh, individual elements that don't require carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen. The reason I mentioned chlorine earlier as well is that, of course, up until now, the way that we've been generating chlorine is by breaking down cactus, right? We take cactus, we can then smelt it into green dye, we can then break that green dye down into nickel chloride, and nickel chloride, of course, contains chlorine. So that's kind of the plan. Let me quickly grab a bunch of sand. We don't have that much sand. We could definitely do with more sand. I think we will have a backlog of sand over in here. We don't. Interesting. Is there a void upgrade on this? There is. Okay, so we are actually deleting any excess sand there. Uh, do we have any excess sand over here? We do. Let me take a few of those as well, and uh, we'll see about using those to make a bunch of snad, which we can do by just crafting it like this, and then we'll see about setting up a giant grid of cactus to generate a large amount of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. All right, so a little bit of snad and fence placing later, and we now have this contraption here. So if we place down a frame draw, we can then get rid of this uh, cobblestone pillar here. We can place down our advanced item collector. And again, we want to set this to the maximum range. And we don't need the maximum Y level, but we do want to make sure that the Y level is low enough that it, uh, it covers the bottom of this farm here. The Twitch chat has pointed out that if we place some of the cactus here, there is a possibility that some of those pieces might tumble over the edge like this. And so to start with, I will probably avoid the outside edge. We'll probably just put cactus starting here and do it like this. If by some happenstance, it turns out that, uh, also we need to move this, I guess. Uh, but if it turns out by some happenstance that this isn't enough cactus, like we don't end up making enough cactus, even with all of the inside area here filled, then uh, maybe we'll try and do something like build maybe a glass wall or something around the outside to give us that extra efficiency, but I have a feeling that we're probably not going to uh, going to need it. Okay, so right away, we've already filled up the, the draw here. I am gonna put a void upgrade on this like straight away because I don't want uh, cactus just kind of filling up the floor here. We are still getting some spillage. I'm hopeful that now there's a void upgrade that might not happen as much, maybe. Um, a little bit of spillage is okay. The items will, of course, despawn eventually. It's only if the spillage gets real bad that it's gonna be a problem. So. 
this is working. It's also a bit of a frame rate hit, but it should be fine. So now the question is, if we get some of the storage upgrades here, how fast are we getting cactus? It's coming in pretty quickly. 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. It's like over 100 a second, which is, uh, is fantastic. So now what we need to do is uh, we can go ahead and turn off the uh, show working area. We can also very quickly try and muffle the, um, the sound of cactus breaking. So this is the, uh, the wall break sound, is what cactus makes. I'm going to set that to like five. Nice. Okay, perfect. So that's working. Let's go and get some of the dissolvers. Now, real quick, we're going to need a lot of dissolvers. We're going to need a lot of combiners. We're going to need a lot of, of, of everything, really, to make all of the elements and all of the compounds that we're going to need to, to complete the ultimate singularities here. And so, real quick, I think I am going to go ahead and teach our system how to make things like the dissolver and like the combiner. Okay, so I taught the system how to make the um, combiner, the compactor, and the dissolver, and I've also taught it how to make the required items for that. So normal compressed cobblestone, double compressed cobblestone, furnaces, and hoppers. I think that's almost everything. Let's see though, can we get like five dissolvers? We cannot because our system doesn't know how to make chests. Really? That is bizarre. I really thought our system knew how to make chests, but that is completely fine. We can go ahead and teach it how to make chests very easily. Encode, drop that in up here. Let's try that again. Can I get five dissolvers? Still no. This does have allow substitutes on, so I feel like it should be working, but the way that we can fix it is just by requesting one of the oak chests that you get by default. Um, instead of getting vanilla Minecraft chests, if you have quark installed, the quark one is the default one. I'm just going to swap the uh, hopper recipe here to use the quark chest in code, and then we'll drop that in like this. And third time's the charm. Can we get five dissolvers? We can. Nice. That should not take too long. It does not at all. Fantastic. Uh, we are also going to need at least one flux pug, but if we have what it takes to make five, I will not say no. Fantastic as well. And then let's go and see if we can't uh, get all of this cactus dissolving into carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We are going to, of course, need individual drawers for all three of those things, but that should be fine. We can make those custom drawers very easily. So let's do something like this. We'll extract upwards, and then we'll do one, two, and one, two. I'm assuming you can insert into the bottom of these and extract from the top. We'll find out shortly. We'll do an extraction here, and again, we will request yet another ultimate pipe upgrade to pull out as fast as possible. We're out of netherite, of all things, which is fine because we have a ton of netherite scrap, or the ability to make a ton of netherite scrap, and I'm pretty sure we've got a ton of gold as well. We do indeed. Fantastic. So real quick then, let's just do this, we should really teach our system how to make the uh, the netherite. That's going to save us a bunch of time going forward. But uh, real quick, once again, let's try that uh, ultimate pipe upgrade. We'll then drop that in like so. These are all filling up. Fantastic. We'll make sure all five of these have power. And now we should see all this stuff getting made. We do, nice. Now we do have to do this again, like we've got to break this down even further. Uh, you'll see we're still gaining cactus here, despite the fact that we're breaking it down pretty quickly. So um, it's a good thing we had the void upgrade there. Let me request five more dissolvers. We're missing smooth stone, eh? Okay, that's fine. We can teach our system how to, um, how to make smooth stone. That's not gonna be a problem for us. We've got a ton of space above our rainbow furnace. So smooth stone let's do one of these in code and then we'll drop that above the rainbow furnace which is this one right here and so once again let's try five more dissolvers start we'll then take those and place them i think right about here that way we can just extract directly from these dissolvers up and over into these dissolvers and then from there we can take all of those and have those go up into dedicated storage drawers for the carbon the hydrogen the oxygen and the nitrogen so uh, real quick can i bookmark this and can i get a couple of chests made for me chat has made a good point here in that what we should do here is we should before we start breaking all of this down into its base uh, you know raw form we should take out 500 or maybe even sorry 2500 sucrose and cellulose because there are sucrose and cellulose singularities like both of these do require their own singularities as part of the ultimate singularity and uh, as i mentioned last stream we need five ultimate singularities and five ultimate ingots in order to finish the pen here so we should get uh, 2500 
cellulose and 2,500 sucrose, and we can begin making those singularities. Uh, that saves us having to break everything down only to then recombine it into uh, cellulose and sucrose. Real quick though, let's get five draws, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, four draws, and then we'll put those down along the top here just as soon as we decorate those with some simulation block. We are going to need a little bit more blank simulation block, but that is completely fine. We've got a bunch of carbon just for that very purpose. One, two, three, and four. Then let's go ahead and put these down. One, two, three, and four. Nothing going into them currently, but that is fine. We want hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. We'll then lock off four of those. Fantastic. And then let's quickly do a little bit of an inventory clear here. We can always grab the temp pad back uh, should we need it somewhat soon. And then let's see about getting the uh, the singularities for these. So what we can do here is we can, of course, just come in and uh, we don't need it for nitrate. We, the nitrate's not required. We do need a nitrogen singularity, but I don't think there's a nitrate singularity that isn't. Uh, so we need the cellulose and we need the sucrose. And um, we'll basically just take all of those that come in and we'll take them all from all of these slots here. And we'll just go over to our um, extended crafting room, which is the far back left corner there, and we'll see about making our first two singularities here once we start having uh, enough of this resource. So we should have enough to make at least one here. Again, five is the magic number. Let's see just how fast this is though. So in here, we are going to need an ultimate catalyst, that being this guy. Thankfully, we can request it. We are missing six emeralds. We still do not have a good, like, reliable... We've got a reliable source of emeralds, but we don't have a good automated source of emeralds. Our reliable source of emeralds is, of course, the Amadron tablet, which we do still have, and uh, we can still use uh, some of these backdoor trades. For example, we've got paper into emeralds, which is uh, probably one we can take. Also, mushrooms to emeralds is still available, and we do still have mushrooms in there. So you know what? I'm, uh, I'm fine for it. Can I, uh, can I place the order? I'll take all 12 if you'll give it to me. Fantastic. So now put those back in and let's request that uh, ultimate catalyst once again. Power-wise, we are going to need a fair bit here. Each singularity requires 5 million redstone flux. And we need 5 of each singularity. And there are, what, 9, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 singularities. So 24 multiplied by 5 multiplied by, I assume they all use the same 5 million. They do indeed. So 120 multiplied by 5 million is 600 million redstone flux per tick. Thankfully, I don't think that's going to be a problem for us because back over this way, we uh, have filled this up. We actually have 3.2 billion redstone flux stored inside of our induction matrix here because, again, this has been running whilst uh, I left the world open to load all of the um, lithium. Either way, back over here, let's see how fast this is. We are going to need yet another flux point and start. Actually, did I power this before? I totally did. Look at that. Isaac of the Past doing some good work there. Do we have that ultimate catalyst? We do indeed. Fantastic. The good news is that the ultimate catalyst doesn't actually get used up. It just stays there. Uh, and so now let's go ahead and drop some sucrose in here and see how fast we can make these singularities. So once you've dropped the full 500 in, it does take a little bit of time, a little more time than I would like <laughs> to make this happen. So what we're probably going to have to do then Given that this is the case, we're probably going to have to make multiple more of these quantum compressors because otherwise, again, we need to do this 120 times, right? There are 24 singularities to make. We need five of each of them. So waiting for this to happen 120 times is, is fine. And chat is right that we can time in a bottle. That is very true. Like that will, will make it eight times faster. And that gets us our first sucrose singularity. We can do the same for cellulose. If you end up with too much in here, you can click eject and that will throw the extra out. And now we can put cellulose in like so. The tricky part is just making sure you've got all of the um, all of the stuff ready to go so you can get maximum use out of the uh, the time in a bottle. So we'll see, actually. We might not need to um, to get too many more of these. It might be possible that we can just time in a bottle it and that will work just fine, potentially. But again, it's hard to hold this much in your inventory all at once. And so now we've got to go and get more sucrose to be able to keep that thing going. And, uh, and we're going to lose our time in a bottle advantage. So it's possible that we could, uh, it might still be well worth us going and, uh, and making more of those potentially. Okay, and not too long later, we have five sucrose and five cellulose singularities. Nice. We'll drop both those in the system. We can also get rid of the excess cellulose as well. Um, so that's two out of 24 done. 
back over here, let's go ahead and uh, and finish this up, shall we? So let's get um, like eight more of these. It's quite expensive, but we can't afford it. And then we're going to have these four. Oh, sorry, we need ten of these, right? I need two more, actually. Which we can still afford. Good stuff. And then we're going to set all of these to extract. Like this. And then we'll do the same up here. We'll set all of these to extract as well. Uh, the drawers are locked, so they should all go to the correct location. Um, I have missed one of these pipes. Which one have I missed? That one. Okay. So that should be working. And you'll see that we're very quickly filling up on hydrogen and oxygen. So once again, we do need the, uh, the, the storage upgrades here. Uh, for those of you wondering why we're not making the highest tier of storage upgrade, it's because we don't have emeralds, as you just saw. So we are having to, uh, to kind of stick with uh, this tier of storage upgrade. Um, I am going to put one of each in for now. And I think real quick, I'm also going to teach my system how to make those upgrades as well. Just because I have a feeling we're going to need quite a few of them. And being able to request them is a lot easier than, uh, than manually crafting them. So now we can just go ahead and request like 10 of these and start. They come in very fast indeed, you'll love to see it. And then now we can go and upgrade these drawers even further to hold a ton of the four key ingredients, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. So we'll do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, for some reason, I thought we had five. That's fine. Let's do hydrogen and oxygen. I think we're going to get more of those than anything else. We should put void upgrades in here. One, two, three, four. That way, even if we uh, fill up on hydrogen, the whole system isn't going to get clogged and we are going to still get nitrogen because you'll see we have a lot less nitrogen here than we do hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, which is fine. I think we are going to need more hydrogen, but we do also need a lot of nitrogen as well, right? We need, uh, I think, 2,500 just for the uh, five nitrogen singularities, which we do now have, but then there are also a few others in here that also do require uh, nitrogen as well. So we do want to make sure that we're uh, taking care of those where possible as well. So while we leave that running, and in fact, I might even go ahead and put more of these in, like, can I get 20 more of these? I totally can. We've got an infinite amount of wood and diamonds, so making these is not really that difficult. There we go. So these are now all completely full up on diamond upgrades. They should be able to hold a ton of all these elements. And while we wait for that to kind of slowly back up on all those elements, I think now we can go ahead and start working on the individual elements that we're going to need for the ultimate ingot and to start using this contraption here to duplicate those elements. So um, I can't help but notice that once again, we still don't have any sugar. Are you making cellulose when you should be making sucrose? That could be my bad there. Um, I think I think I saw this. And I thought cellulose was right, but it's not. I want to be making sucrose, not cellulose. Take that out. There we go. Okay, so now this should get all fired up again. We should see all of our blue boys come back online. You love to see it. Fantastic. So um, now is the slightly tedious bit, though, because now we need to utilize both the uh, fission and fusion reactor. And of course, currently we don't have a fission reactor, but we do have the fusion reactor to, uh, to generate elements. So what I might do real quick here, let's grab the yttrium and let's see if we can't start with the yttrium because we know we're going to need it for the ultimate ingot. And we also know we're going to need it if we want to make our fission reactor. That's what we're currently missing. The fission core requires yttrium. So if we grab another storage drawer, any drawer will do. This drawer right here, will do actually i think it's full of coal uh, between streams i did try and tidy things up a little bit by the way i put uh, i basically made a few drawers sucked a ton of coal out of this resource simulator so we could get rid of the big pipes that were running up and around the room and so now there's just a drawer here with twenty thousand coal feeding the furnace and there's a drawer over here with like ten thousand coal feeding the sugar cane i figured that'd be more than enough for, uh, for everything that's gonna be needed there um real quick if i uh, empty this drawer out here i think we can then go ahead and dump all of that into one of these drawers they've got a ton of space inside of them and then uh, we'll take this guy and we'll use this one as our new resource generator so what we need to do here now is we need to change all of the insertions from lithium to whatever element is going to go in here but i think there's a better way of doing this i think a better way is probably going to be to get another insertion card because right now on each card here we have an insert card that is whitelisted for skystone and lithium we need to change that because we don't want any lithium in these basins anymore we just want skystone going in and then we want whatever element is in this drawer going to those basins and while we could go through and every time we want to swap to a new element we could go around and change the whitelist to the new element that is not ideal it's gonna be very tedious it's gonna take a long time and so i think what we might do is if we just grab six more item cards. This is going to be a bit more work up front, but it's going to save us a ton of work, I think, in the long run. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. That little uh, overview there, the fact that that keeps showing up even when you're in here makes it real awkward. But uh, what we'll do here is we'll set this card to insert and we'll just put it on a different channel. So here we'll put in a new card for insert. We'll open it up and we'll just set it to, to pink, right? We'll set it to the pink channel. And then that way what we can do is over here, we can take out the extraction card because we're no longer, actually, no, that's not true. We want to leave this extraction card in because we still want this lithium to go into these deployers to make more skystone. But now we don't want that lithium going down here. We only want it going to the deployers. Instead, we can get, get another item card, this one here. We can set this to extract on the pink channel and put that into the bottom here like that. That's going to extract whatever is in here, which can be any element we want. Take that and use that as part of the duplication process, right? The only thing we then need to change is uh, we also need an insertion card at the bottom here as well, uh, which is yet one more item card that we're going to put in here like that. This one doesn't need to be filtered. This just needs to be, uh, oh, it does need to be filtered, but it needs to be orange, I think, because that is the current system that is putting lithium back in this drawer. We don't want any lithium going back in that drawer, so we just want to make this set to orange because that is the previous system that was set up for taking things out. Although I think we're still going to run into an issue, right? The issue that we're going to run into is that our, gosh, our, this is so complex now. We've got four cards in here. The extraction card is set to lithium. I don't know if there is a way to tell the counting filter. Maybe if we, it says exact. If I leave exact off, I wonder if the lithium like element and ignoring NBT is also on. Like we're not matching NBT, we're ignoring it. So I think that might work in that it might also, I think all the elements have like a similar NBT is what I'm trying, what I'm getting at. So like if I, if I put this uh, in, we don't want stone in here either, geez. Can I blacklist stone from going in? I think I can, right? Uh, so on the orange side, let's uh, get a filter. And then let's uh, disallow stone from being inserted here. So now if we take all that stone out, we'll also dis disallow lithium as well. So now let's see, if I put some yttrium in there, that yttrium should get taken and it's going to get put in here. Let me take the lithium out of there and then let's put the yttrium back in. So the yttrium's in there. This is working and is generating more yttrium, right? We then want to extract that yttrium and insert it down here, right? But we don't want to insert the lithium. Gosh, this is difficult, chat. It's quite difficult. To be honest, it's not going to take too long to get the 80 yttrium we need for the uh, ingot just from this one mixer, but it's still a little awkward. I think it's also not um, inserting here, which makes me think that this extraction card isn't working in the way that I thought it would. Default down, up, north, south, east, west. We don't need that as default. Round robin, exact. I think the problem is that here, I've told this insert card to not allow elements in. If I say match MBT, now it should be only, now I would hope at least that it's only lithium that's not allowed in and not all elements. Hold on, let me let me try and uh, more, more easily explain what I'm trying to do here. If I grab uh, two chests, and I can also see for myself if this is actually working as I, uh, as I hope it works. So I'll place a node down between these two. Let's say I want to extract from one and insert into the other, right? I do not know, it, it used to be in older versions of Alchemistry, and this is Chemlib, but it used to be that the elements were all kind of considered by the game to be the same item, but they had different MBT data, right? And so if we set this to extract, and we'll get a filter, and we'll say that you can extract, we'll say allow lithium, right? But ignore MBT. If I put that in the extraction card and I put that in here. We'll put an insert card there, exit card here. If I put lithium in, that lithium gets moved. If I put oxygen in, the oxygen doesn't get moved. Okay, so that is no longer the case. It's no longer the case that they're the same item with a different MBT, unfortunately. Um, even with exact off, which it currently is, it still moves everything over. So instead, what we might need to do is we might need a different kind of filter. There's a tank filter and there's a mod filter. Do these both, if we press F3H, it shows our advanced tool tips. These are, they don't share a tank. That's Chemlib Oxygen, that's Chemlib Lithium. Uh, if we do F3H again, we could do a mod filter 
potentially, that's this one here, that might be able to do what we want it to do. So I don't think the mod tank, I've, I've made the mod filter, but I don't think it's going to work because uh, the problem we're having here is that we don't want the lithium to go in here, but we do want the yttrium or whatever else we put into going here. I think the solution is, is potentially to change the extraction of lithium to yet another channel. We'll make that blue and we'll set the insertion here to blue as well. So the lithium insertion and extraction is on a completely different channel to everything else. So back down here, let's go back to insertion. We can now get rid of lithium on the allow list. And that way lithium shouldn't end up in there. Um, the way that we need to fix that, of course, is we need to go around and uh, none of these should have lithium in them at this point, which they currently do. So let me quickly go and toggle all of these filters to no longer have lithium. And uh, we'll see if we can get this monstrosity to actually to work. Okay, so now no lithium is in here and lithium can't go in there. The trouble that we run into though is we need to be able to ideally set this extract card to extract. I, I, can you put a, a mod filter in a counting filter? You can. Interesting. Does that work? Like if I, in the mod filter, if I specify chemlib as the mod that I want to filter for and I say it aloud, can I then put the mod filter into let's get rid of this i want none of those can i put the mod filter into the counting filter and have the counting filter always keep one item that is from chemlib in the system if that works props to direwolf this is a fantastic mod uh, but let's see so if i put right here we've got 16 sky stone. if i put a yttrium in there ideally excess yttrium is made and then the yttrium should be moved over here but i don't think it's gonna work this is set to extract on the orange channel and over here this is set to insert on the orange channel and deny stone. So I feel like that yttrium should be being moved. And yeah, I don't think the nested filters work, unfortunately. Um, that would have been incredible. But I think it just counts the number of, yeah, the number of mod filters. It doesn't nest the filter inside of itself. In that case, though, I don't know how we can leave exactly one yttrium in here to make it, to, to allow it to keep working. I just don't think it's going to, um, it's going to work, which is not the end of the world. We can just wait until this is full on yttrium, which is a 64. It might even be better, honestly, because if we do it this way, we can just right click to take all the yttrium out. Um, there's currently no draw for Skystone, which is maybe a, a flaw in the system. But um, if we leave the system as it currently is, it means that we can't fully automate it for one element. You know, we can't put yttrium in and then just keep making yttrium until we want to stop. But it does mean that we can make multiple elements at a time, right? We can drop one yttrium in here and then leave it going until it's full, then take a full stack out. We can put one, you know, neon in here, a helium in here, a phosphorus in here, a krypton in here, and, you know, something else in here. We can put one in each thing and then you get like a stack of each at a time, which might even be better because we do need to get a lot of different elements and we don't need to get hundreds of them. We only need 80 of all of the different elements here. So let's leave that as it is for now. Let's instead combine the yttrium up here into yttrium dust. And if we're going to make the fission cores, we need three of these. We are going to need 18 yttrium ingots. So we are going to need a bit more yttrium here than the seven that we have, but that is fine. We can get more just by placing yttrium into these, uh, these basins here. Once we have more than 16, we can drop those in. Uh, we're actually very close to having all of the yttrium required in total there. We need uh, 16 in order to make the fission cores. And then we need uh, five more, right, yttrium to make the uh, the ultimate ingot. So uh, we actually only have one extra yttrium ingot, so we are going to need yet more yttrium to make this happen. And I think I actually just used the last of the yttrium to make this yttrium ingot. Never mind, I didn't. It's fine. Okay. So let's go and drop these back in again. This time we'll just do one here and, and one there. That's going to get us ideally two stacks of yttrium, which is more than the 80 that we're going to need in total. Back over here, we can do one, two, and three with the fission core. We can then grab some more of the reactor casing and the reactor glass. We should be able to fill in the top of our reactor over here. And then of course, fill in the sides with all of the reactor glass. At that point, the final piece of the puzzle will be the fission controller, which if memory serves me right, wasn't too difficult for us to make. Let me check, do we have the fission controller? We do not, however, uh, it is indeed very easy to make. We'll put that down right about here. It also looks like we're going to need a little bit more in the way of reactor glass. But again, the reactor glass is just lead oxide and silicon dioxide, both of which we should be able to do fairly quickly. 
All right, 24 is more than we're going to need. And so that should be everything, chat, for the fission multi-block. Let's do this. And as soon as that last one goes down, perfect. This is working. Earlier, we did make an excess flux point. So we'll steal that and we'll drop you down right about here. Set that to our network. And so now we have not only a way of doing fusion, but we also have a way of doing fission. The fission is able to take an element, for example, yttrium here with an atomic number of 39. And if we put that in, it will use 5,000 redstone flux per tick to break that down into two composite elements. In this case, it chose 20 and 19 because 20 plus 19 is 39. Unfortunately for us, both calcium and the potassium are not ones that we need because we already have those in the system. But what we need to do now really is go through every single ingot and make it, right? So uh, lithium we have, beryllium I believe we have, sodium I'm pretty sure we have. We do, we've got sodium oxide, we can break that down into uh, sodium and oxygen. Let me bookmark the uh, ultimate ingot here. What else do we have? Magnesium I'm pretty sure we have. We do, obviously. Uh, then there's aluminum, which we have, potassium we have, calcium we have, scandium and titanium. Titanium we definitely have. Scandium we also have. Fantastic. What else do we need? We need vanadium, chromium, and magnesium. Uh, manganese, sorry. Manganese and chromium, I'm pretty sure we have. Vanadium we also have. Vanadium we also have. Cobalt we have. Nickel we have. Zinc we have. Gallium we have. Rubidium, I'm pretty sure we have. Strontium, I'm pretty sure we've seen. Yttrium we've also just got. Zychronium. Okay, so a lot of tedium later, and these are the elements that we do not currently have. So all of the other elements, we had at least one of, and so we can just take those and drop them into our you know, duplication system to get to 80. Once we have 80, we can make the five ingots, and we can put them into the uh, ultimate crafting table, which I think currently is actually in the system. It is indeed. Let's add that to our room of ultimate crafting. We'll put it down like that. So uh, once we have all the other ingots, we can start putting them in the ultimate crafting table. For all of these elements though, we're gonna have to use either the fission or fusion reactor, or maybe a combination of both, to actually get those uh, elements, right? So if I type 24, does it tell me? It does. So thankfully you can just type the number into JI. For example, if I type 24 here, chromium has the number 24. So if I take two chromium and I drop that in like so, that is going to slowly but surely, I don't know why this is disconnected. Like it, I think just breaking and replacing it, it does work. But uh, that gets us the cadmium. Cadmium, I can check off the list and I can put that into the system, right? And now we're just gonna do the exact same thing for all of these. Well, I guess the first check is, do we have uh, 21? 21 is scandium, we do indeed. We can take two of those and drop those in here. Uh, the next question, by the way, is if you don't have, that's Molly Bendham uh, taken care of, but the next question is if you don't have half of the number, so here's 70, do we have 35? We are gonna get a lot of quest completions here. We don't have 25. The next question is, do you have double? So do we have 140? In this case, we don't have 35 or 140. So in this case, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more work here. My next guess would be like, we could try and break down something a little closer. Like, do we have like a 30 or a 31? We got 31, so we could take two gallium and then we could combine that up in here. That's gonna get us uh, 62 which is close, we need 70. So now we need a seven, oh sorry, we need an eight. So if we type in eight, eight is not mercury, eight is oxygen. We can then combine those two up in here as well like that. And that's gonna get us the yitterbium, that one right there. Um, again, if it's a low numbered one, like if it's, let's see, maybe 45, it's possible we might have 90. We do, look at that, we've got thorium. So the thorium, we can take that, we can drop that in here. That's gonna break the thorium down into two of the uh, ruthenium that we need. Oh, sorry, the rhodium that we need, not the ruthenium. Uh, the rhodium was further up here somewhere. Oh yeah, over here. We can bookmark that as well. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna get all of these elements. Okay, so I think very tediously, I have managed to make all of the elements, if I type in chem lib, I think I've made all of the elements required for the ultimate singularities. At the bottom here, there's a bunch of HFs and TMs and EUs and GDs and IRs and POs and HOs. Anyway, we have all, at least one, of every single element required to make the ultimate ingot. So now we're going to go through one by one and we're going to take that element, drop it into the, um, the basins over here, duplicate the element until we have 80, then take the 80, run those over through the uh, compactor to make the dust variant of that element, then we'll smelt the dust variant of that element, and then once we have five of every single ingot of every single 
element, we can then put them all together, including a few extra things like the netherite, the platinum, the zinc, the nickel, the iron, the silver, the, all the extra uh, Minecraft ingots that are in here as well. And we should finally have what it takes to make five ultimate ingots. All right. So what feels like maybe six hours later, we've done it. <laughs> we have at least five of every single ingot required to make the ultimate ingots. Most of them we have seven of, because what I've been doing is I've been taking two of the element, dropping it into the basin, that then makes 128 of the element, and 128 of the element makes seven ingots. And so we have slightly overshot on some of these, but if we go ahead and take all five of these, that is that quest complete, and it's also all of the ultimate ingots that we're going to need to finish the pack. We can get rid of all the rest of the ingots here. In fact, it looks like we might be out of space in our system, which doesn't surprise me. We've almost certainly ran out on types and not bytes over here. Yeah, we're full up on types on a lot of those. Thankfully, we should be able to make um, another 4K storage disk. In fact, we could probably make a, a 1K storage disk, honestly, because again, it's types that we're low on and not, um, and not bytes. So if we just make like two more 1K storage disks, we can drop those to fill up our ME drive over here, and then we can drop all the rest of these into the system, including our ultimate ingot. And so now, chat, our sole focus, and of course the reward there is one singular cryptocurrency, but uh, now our next and final task here, uh, or kind of semi-final task, the final task that is gonna start the domino cascading effect of completing the pack is getting the ultimate singularity. So whilst we were making the ultimate ingot over here, this has been running, and we have maxed out these four drawers Apart from the nitrogen, we've maxed out the other three drawers, uh, and we have 200,000 oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen, which I think should be more than enough to do what we need to do here. So I'm gonna pick all four of these up, actually, and take them with us. So I think, basically, all we need to do now is go through each one of these one by one and just make whatever it is we need to make. So for example, um, I think, I don't know if this one is oxygen or not. It is, perfect. So we can take our oxygen drawer, for example, we can grab our pipe, we can grab our wrench, we can do this, we can set it to extract, we can make sure that we have a very fast pipe upgrade ready to go. And we'll of course drop that in right about here. And then uh, if we eject the leftovers, we can then produce, hopefully very quickly, especially if we use our uh, time in a bottle, which does currently have 20 hours stored within it. And we can very quickly get the, uh, the five oxygen singularities. After the five oxygen singularities, I think we might quickly go through and make the hydrogen, nitrogen, and carbon singularities, just because, again, we have everything that we need for that. So that is those done. We've got hydrogen, we've got oxygen, we've got nitrogen, we've got carbon, and we can start doing the same process over here now. We can come into our uh, table and we can put in oxygen, we can put in carbon. It's down there. Uh, oh no, it's there. There's quite, thankfully, fewer singularities than there were ingots here. We can put in hydrogen, which I think is right about there, and then nitrogen is the second to last one, which I think is right about there. We then did make two singularities earlier. We made the cellulose and the sucrose. The cellulose goes diagonally up from the hydrogen, and then the sucrose goes two over from the hydrogen right about there. Okay, so we're filling this in a nice bit faster than we were previously, but, uh, but now we basically just need to go through and utilizing what is almost certainly gonna have to be laser IO, because again, the, uh, the compactors and the combiners are a little finicky. What we should be able to do is, let's say that we do a laser node here, let's get a combiner requested, and then let's put that down right about here. That does of course need to be connected with power. Do we have energy pipes? We totally do. Let's just do something like this. We do of course have to upgrade that with an ultimate pipe upgrade, that is fine. It doesn't need to be ultimate, honestly, but a regular pipe upgrade of some persuasion to make it so that this can extract uh, more than uh, 256 redstone flux per tick. Although to be fair, 256 is more than this can use by default, but I have a feeling we will almost certainly end up uh, speeding this up a fair bit here. So uh, we will, actually let's put this, no yeah, let's put this over here like that. And then let's move this over to here, like this, because then we're gonna place down basically like all four of these drawers. We're gonna put down the oxygen, we'll put down the hydrogen, we'll put down the nitrogen, and we'll put down the carbon, like that. And then what we'll do, we'll set this to not connect, like that. And we'll use some item cards. We'll leave one of them as insert, and we'll set that to down. So that's gonna insert 
into the bottom. And then the other four sides we can set to uh, to extract. Now, obviously, depending on what it is we're trying to make. So the first thing we're trying to make is ammonia here, which needs nitrogen and hydrogen. So it's uh, three hydrogen and one nitrogen. So I think what we'll do is we'll grab like a stack of each of these. So hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. And we'll use our four extraction cards and we'll use our four counting filters that we are about to make to uh, to filter those out. So let's just make another four filters and then let's make those into four counting filters just as soon as we get four observers. One, two, three, four. And then we'll just do the exact same thing that we did earlier here. We'll have one of these set to a stack of nitrogen, the other set to a stack of hydrogen, the other set to a stack of oxygen, and the other set to a stack of carbon. And then depending on what it is we make, we can just uh, change these up, right? So we'll say extract. Uh, ooh, no. Oh, no, that's not quite right. We'll set the four of these to extract like that, and then we'll put those in. But then basically down at the bottom, it's a little difficult to, to access. Oh, no, we don't need to go underneath. We can just go in here. On the down card, what we'll do is we'll have uh, maybe more than one insert card, but we'll just use the, uh, the different insert cards. We'll have up to four. I don't know if we're going to need all four, but we'll put four insert cards in, and then we'll have each one of these responsible for a different counting filter, right? So right now we want nitrogen and we want hydrogen. The other two are gonna be oxygen and carbon. But again, for the time being, that's not what we want. So we'll set all of the rest of these to extract. We're almost certainly going to want to, uh, to speed all of these up. So we are gonna want some overclockers, probably more than the 14 that we currently have available to us. That is fine. We can make a bunch more and then let's make the extraction nice and quick we want to do 64 per tick on all of the sides here we'll start with the hydrogen and the nitrogen though because those are the ones that we're going to be using right out of the gate here 64 and one so that's going to bring those down and that's going to start making amide we don't want amide we want ammonia which is this one right here so we'll select ammonia and we'll leave that doing its thing we'll set this over here to extract i'm hoping it's only going to extract the ammonia it is indeed fantastic and so now we just need to make 2500 ammonia which we should be able to do here. Oh, I've not set the um, the right side to extract, have I? That's uh, carbon, not nitrogen. Nitrogen's over here. It is extracting just very slowly. We need to add the, uh, the upgrades here. I added them to carbon by accident. That is fine. And then once this is full, we can then make sure that we have the ultimate pipe upgrade in there, moving that faster. And we can do something like this with the time in a bottle. And so long as our power doesn't dip, we should be able to hopefully make the, uh, the five singularities for this fairly quickly. And then basically you get the idea. I'm going to go through and make the singularities for everything else on the list here. Propane is the same, but we do carbon and hydrogen instead of hydrogen and nitrogen. Mercury, uh, I'll do all of the ones apart from the, uh, the ones that require individual elements. Like mercury, we obviously don't have yet. Uh, neon, we don't have yet. But all of the ones that just require carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we'll go through and we'll just make this this way. Okay, so a little bit of time later. Nowhere near as long as with the ultimate ingot. Uh, we're getting closer. So I think I've made all of the singularities that require hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Um, there are still a few more that require cactus, like the chlorine, but I've not done the mercury, the neon, the fluorite, uh, the fluorine, the phosphorus, the argon, the encrypted, even though we have it, the krypton, the, the helium, the silicon dioxide, the protein, the sulfur, the chlorine, and that's it. I've done all the rest of them. But all of those don't require hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. So these four drawers now are done with. We have got 185,000 left. We did use close to 100,000 hydrogen, which is crazy. Uh, we didn't use much oxygen at all. We used about 10,000, and uh, we used maybe about 40,000 carbon as well. So that's a, a rough estimate uh, as to how much of all of those you need to uh, to get those items there. Fantastic. So we can eject the remainder of, uh, of what's here, like so. And, uh, and now we can start working through some of the stuff that we know that we have a ton of. So for example, encrypted ingots, we know we have those over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Gets us over 500. It does tell you in the bottom left there next to the um, the toolbar what it is, uh, how many it is that we have. So we can just go ahead and drop all of these in. Uh, obviously we need 2,500, not just 500. So let me go and get another 1,500 of these real quick. And there we go. There are five encrypted singularities. Let's drop those in. Um, I think it's right about there next to the uh, sucrose. It's not quite. It's one over this krypton there. Okay, so now the next batch that we need to work on. Uh, protein should be easy enough, and silicon dioxide actually should also be easy enough. Let me quickly go and check how much 
I don't think we had that much string. We got 1,600 string. Each string gets you a 50% chance for keratin, and the keratin breaks down to two protein. So that equates to approximately one protein per string. So we have about 1,500 protein there. We do also have rotten flesh, though. We've got 5,000 rotten flesh, and each rotten flesh has a guaranteed three protein. And so all we need to do is just break down a bunch of rotten flesh. And so uh, let's grab another dissolver real quick, get that hooked up to the line here, and we should be able to get 2,500 protein uh, very quickly. And boom, five protein singularities. Nice, drop those in over here as well. And then the final one that I think we can just do right out the gate is silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide we can get from cobblestone. We've got 198,000 cobblestone. It is a guaranteed silicon dioxide, right, per every cobblestone. Oh, it's not, it's a 1% chance. However, we do, of course, have uh, some of this uh, very, very compressed cobblestone. And so uh, if we just compress that further into triple compressed, and then maybe even further into quadruple compressed, each quadruple compressed cobblestone, does that give you silicon dioxide? It does, but only at a very small percent chance. But then again, you do roll this 6,500 times. So I think it's possible we could get 2,500 very quickly here. We're just going to get a lot of other stuff at the same time. And there we go, five silicon dioxide singularities later. Drop those in as well. So we're almost there. And the next batch of singularities are the ones that require white simulation block. So um, mercury we can get from enderpearls. I believe here we've got yeah definitely you get 16 per ender pearl and we have 5,000 ender pearls so that's not going to be a problem whatsoever but uh some of these other ones here so neon once we have one neon which we should have now um, or if we don't have we can always make it with our fission and fusion reactor we can then duplicate that by breaking down the lime simulation block and we get more and more of that every single time the same is true for phosphorus i think it is we can use the uh, pink simulation block here to duplicate the phosphorus then there's the then there's fluorine which i think might also have one it doesn't fluorine fluorine's an odd one and i think we're actually going to have to use the mixing process to get 2500 fluorine i think this is the only one of basically all of them here actually there might be one or two more i think helium might be on the same list let me bookmark fluorine uh back over here Methane we have argon, we can duplicate using blue simulation block. That is also fine. Encrypted we have krypton. We are going to have to make using this process. I think helium is the last one that we also have to make using this process. But uh, let me just quickly check. Sucrose we have, ethane we have, helium we've just done, carbon, sulfur we can get by running through the yellow simulation block. Yes, there's yellow simulation block right there. And then that's it. And then chlorine we can get by smelting the cactus and breaking that down. So I think these three right here are ones, are the only ones that we're going to have to actually use this system to get everything we need, right? And so uh, here is where we uh, actually don't have any helium. Interesting. And the helium is, is just two hydrogen. So we can uh, grab, we'll grab a few hydrogen here and we'll make a few uh, hydrogen with the reactor. I'm actually interested how we're doing on power. We have been using it quite extensively, both for extended crafting and for the reactors. We've used, you know, a few million a few hundred million even uh, redstone flux, but we're still at uh, almost three billion redstone flux. So I'm fairly certain here that power is just not going to be a problem for us, which is fantastic. Let's go ahead and drop that guy in there. And you know what? Let's even go ahead and uh, accelerate it a little bit, even though we do not have the, the power throughput <laughs> to make that happen because 100,000 hours per tick is our maximum. But uh, once we have at least six helium, we can then go and do like one, two, three, uh, whoops, four. We'll get that one in a second. Uh, five. And six also whoops on both of those let me uh try practicing my throwing skills here every time i feel like earlier when i was doing this they were a little more lenient but we'll get that one in and then i think i missed one over here as well i did there we go so we just have to keep going back to these once they're full taking the six stacks out re-putting one into each of these getting another six stacks and then doing that over and over again while we wait for that to do its thing let's go grab the builder from the mining dimension and let's configure it in the overworld to mine for simulation block so over here, what we'll do is we'll grab a crafter from RF Tools. These are super useful. Uh, we are missing a machine frame here. That's fine. And we can have our system craft those crafting tables for us. That's also fine. But uh, what we can do here is we can extract the white simulation block that we're going to get from our builder. We can extract that over and into the tier one crafter. In the tier one crafter, let's say that we're going to start with, um, what's that with the neon, right? I don't know if we have any neon. We do not. 
So we'll take some fluorine, which is element nine, and we'll combine that with hydrogen. That's of course gonna give us our first bit of neon, and that first bit of neon is going to allow us to make our first, um, I think it's lime simulation block that we're making here. So we'll take the neon there. And then if we go and craft that, what we should be able to do, if we grab some white simulation block, which we're gonna start mining momentarily here, but we can take this and in here, we can teach this by clicking this recipe. And over here, we can say that white simulation block plus neon equals lime simulation block, apply. And everything else can stay the same for now. Then we want to get a dissolver and we might as well go ahead and steal one or two of these dissolvers now. We don't need these anymore over here. We also don't need the cactus farm either, but that's fine. Uh, I probably lost those dissolvers due to the fact that uh, there's cactus beneath me. It would be very surprising if we didn't. And so, you know what? I'm just going to request some more dissolvers here. That's going to be faster, I think, than fishing for those. That was my bad. Let me get a few more dissolvers. And let's put those down over here. So one thing we do want to do here is we do want to make sure that there's always space in the input slot for neon to go. So uh, what you can do with this crafter, which is pretty nifty, is you can designate certain slots, uh, certain slots to certain items. For example, if I put neon in here and I put remember this current item in the internal and external buffers, I click this button. Now when I take the neon out, this slot is locked to neon. So no matter what happens, there will always be space for neon in this slot here, which is perfect. We'll do that for a few slots just to make sure that there's a good amount of space for neon to go into. The crafter is pretty fast, so uh, that shouldn't be a problem. We'll then click R again. We'll have all of these slots set to white simulation block. And now if we put these in, it makes the lime simulation block very quickly. We're then gonna extract from that down and into one of our dissolvers. We'll put that down. Uh, we'll put down, you know, four of these like this, and we'll have all of these set up like that. And um, I think we did manage to lose our Maybe we managed to lose our, no, we definitely managed to lose our, um, oh no, the right there. Look, there's one right there, these pipe upgrades. You'll have to see it. So we'll, we'll steal that pipe upgrade back. <laughs> and then uh, over here, let's set this side here to extract and we'll set it also to round robin as well. So that's gonna distribute the neon, uh, or the, the lime simulation blocks even, uh, amongst all of these machines. So these are gonna take it, they're gonna break it down. It's only the neon that we're after. We don't need the bromine or the tungsten and so, um, I guess though we could probably still get a draw for each of them if we just get three draws and then just whack in three void upgrades, that's gonna be fine. And basically what we'll do is we will just extract from these over into here. And then what we'll do is we'll put the other draws like over here for now, like this. And we'll say, you guys should extract. And we'll put the pipe upgrades in all of them. But we'll make sure that all of these are set to nearest first, which they will be by default. And so they should automatically try and put all of their neon into here before they put any of it in over here, which is why the, the tungsten and the bromine has made it, but the neon hasn't. The neon should make its way back into, into here, which it has. Um, I don't know how we've ended up with bromine in the top slot there. Yeah, this is all working. Now we just need to get all of these connected up with power, which we can do with just a few more of the good old fashioned energy pipes. like that, set this guy to extract, give him a pipe upgrade, and we should be good to go. So now we just need to get the actual uh, white simulation block. So uh, looking down, white simulation block spawns between Y levels at zero and three. So we'll set this to a massive 512 by 512 area. We're gonna set the Y level to just three tall, and we're gonna set this, what Y level we are currently at? We are at Y level seven. So we'll say negative five. That should take it to Y level two, and it should do one block above, one block below. Let's see if that works let's get a lever let's take out the filter because we're not filtering this time and then let's turn this on like that in fact i'm going to move that over to here i don't think it's going to interfere with that pipe so i think we can just turn that on not enough room oh of course so this needs to be um, an actual chest of some persuasion you can't just extract from the um from the builder unfortunately that's fine we can do this and then we can do something like this extract pipe upgrade turn it on that is filling up with the wrong kind of simulation block. I somehow always get this wrong, but we are one level too high. That's fine. Let me turn that off. Let's lower that. Let's lower that. Sometimes when you open it, it shows the wrong thing. And let's lower that to minus six. Turn it off, turn it back on.
And there we go. We should start to see uh, white simulation block is coming in. You'd love to see it. Uh, lime simulation block is being made very quickly. These are all filling up very quickly as well. You'd love to see it. And soon, as soon as the uh, the slots here for neon have filled up, we're going to start getting neon over here. And and very quickly, we're going to start to uh, to to back up here. Right? We've already got uh, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. We've already got almost five hundred neon over here. Uh, let me get those void upgrades specifically for the draws that are not neon here. We don't have any obsidian. Interesting. Um, I'll put the one. Probably shouldn't have put it in there, actually. Actually, I should put it in here. But uh, you'll see that we're at 90, 100. So that's going to slowly but surely fill up to, uh, to 2,500. While we wait for that, let's go and check in on our helium and see if we can't get that up to, to 2,500 as well, because I assume that we are full up over here. We totally are. Okay, so a quick trip to the nether, and we now have more obsidian. So let's go ahead and drop that in here. So now these are both being voided and we're almost at 2000 neon. So we're almost there on the 2500 neon. I have doubled up the number of dissolvers because I think that's currently just our limiting factor is uh, just how fast can we dissolve the neon. You'll see that we're backed up completely on white simulation blocks. So it's just a matter of dissolving speed. Um, once we're done with neon, we can of course move over to the next one on the list, which is going to be uh, phosphorus, I believe here, which is with the, uh, the pink simulation block. So do we have any phosphorus? We totally do. Nice. So all we're going to do, though, is just swap this out. What do we get when we break down pink simulation block? That's going to tell us how many draws we need. Uh, we just need three. We need magnesium, we need carbon, and we need phosphor. Uh, we already have a draw for carbon. It's one of these four here. I have no idea which one it is. By process of elimination, I'm going to say it's this one. <laughs> so we'll put that down like here, and then we'll just grab two more draws. For the remaining elements and now that we're past 2800 on that let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this in fact all we need to do is just change the uh the center block there let me hit apply real quick so it stops making the uh the neon and then let's take the neon out we do need to then take our phosphor though and start putting that in so if we just quickly divide that between all the slots that neon previously held we can then say remember at which point that should remember it does and then we can just say that i want you to make Phosphor instead, apply. There we go. And now all of these are making the stuff we need. So then we just need to add the draws for carbon, for phosphorus, and uh, we are going to get a little bit of extra magnesium as well. So we've got the carbon, we've got magnesium. Let's add the phosphor. Uh, again, we are going to need some void upgrades here. We already have a void upgrade on the carbon. We don't need a void upgrade, I don't believe, on the phosphor because that is what we're after. All we need to do with the phosphor is make sure it has at least one storage upgrade because we do need more than 2,000. And 48. And so uh, we should, hopefully, if we connect this up at the bank, begin to slowly but surely fill up the phosphor draw as well. Look at that, we're at 1,300 already. That's actually going to be incredibly quick. And then uh, we can do the same thing here with everything else that can do this. So argon, uh, I'll bookmark that. We can do the same with the blue simulation block, which is made with argon. So that one's going to be the same as with the neon. And then krypton, we can't, right? Krypton was part of the, uh, the three that need to be done the way helium is being done. And then Sulfur, I think, was the only other one because then chlorine we're going to do using cactus. So I just need to do argon and sulfur. Uh, this is almost done. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do those two as well. All right. And not too long later, we're almost at 2,500 sulfur. It's coming in slowly but surely. We've got over 2,500 argon. We've got over 2,500 phosphorus. And we've got over 2,500 neon. And there is our 2,500 sulfur. We can go ahead and, uh, and stop that now. It doesn't need to be going anymore. That's perfect. Let's take the sulfur, the argon, the phosphor, and the neon. So we have enough to make all four of those. Helium is still going. I've not really been paying too much attention to it, but it's almost, we, we've got like the first round done, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done there. Over here, we can do the exact same thing we were doing before. We can just replace the combiner with just the actual drawer itself. So here we've got the argon. Again, make sure we set that to extract and put in the upgrade. That's going to start making it nice and quick. All we need to do here is just accelerate this to be nice and fast. We shouldn't really have to worry about overfilling here because we're going to have basically the exact amount to overfill it by. We can then swap the argon out for whatever is next on the chopping block. It's phosphor. Annoyingly, when you remove the, the drawer, it removes the, the pipe upgrade, which is a bit of a pain in the backside, but that's fine. We're actually running, it's actually like using too much power is what it's doing here, which is wild. Uh, I don't know which one I just picked up, uh, but we'll go with the one that's got sulfur in it. We'll try maybe going just a 64x here then instead. Maybe it looks like 128x is a bit too 
aggressive. 60 Forex might also be a bit too aggressive. Like there's a bit of leeway whenever it uh, it finishes like one, but then it goes right back up again. And then the last one is Neon. We'll get the Neon down, extract, and pipe upgrade. Take that out, eject, and get the Neon made. And, uh, and that's those ones done. Okay, so we only have five singularities left. Three of them are the Helium, the Fluorite, and the other one, the Krypton. Those three, of course, are made using our duplication system over there. The other two are Mercury, which we can do with Enderpearls. So we can take our Enderpearls here. Uh, Enderpearls do break down into a few things here, and it's really only the Mercury that we're after. So what I might do is I might grab one of these two by two drawers that's been hanging out. And if we quickly replace this with a two by two drawer, we could then potentially have another pipe here, make that nice and fast, just extract everything that comes out of the end of pearls over into here. If we add a, a draw upgrade to that, we've got five of them like this, and then we could get another pipe extraction upgrade. I feel like this might be our most crafted item in the series and we keep leaving them behind. We don't need to make this many of them, but either way, we can set this to extract and we want to whitelist just the mercury. Initially, we are going to get more than just mercury in here, but that's fine. Submit. In fact, we actually have extra, uh, extra neon in here, so that's fine. So let's take out the neon and then let's go start making mercury. Beautiful. And then we can just pump the, uh, the dissolver over here that we're going to speed up. We'll make this nice and fast as well. We'll go 64X. We'll speed this up and pump it full of enderpearls and it really shouldn't take that many ender pearls for us to get, yeah, look at that, we're basically done. Uh, in terms of five Mercury Singularities, you love to see it, we'll put that in over here. Then let's head on back through to our cacti farm. And we actually want some of the cactus for once. We've got uh, 98,000 cactus. I'm not quite sure how much cactus we're gonna need, but now we need to start smelting this, uh, thankfully, incredibly quickly in the rainbow furnace. And then we can take that uh, green dye And we can break that down. We're going to need two uh, dissolvers here, though. So one gets you four nickel chloride, and I assume that's just, uh, oh, that's eight chlorine. So we 512 is more than enough then. Um, actually, do we have 512 cactus green? Yeah, 512 is more than enough then, because that's going to get us like 4,000 uh, chlorine, right? And we're only 2,500. So uh, let's just get another dissolver. Put that down like here. We're going to put the cactus green in there. That's going to produce the nickel chloride. We're then going to extract the nickel chloride over and into another dissolver that's going to make nickel and chlorine. Then we can get rid of this drawer here and we'll replace it, you know what, with another 4x4 four four drawer just because, uh, by 4x4 four four, I mean 2x2, two two, just because we have it. Let's do that. Then let's set you up with a bit of green dye. Let's set you to extract and give it a nice fast pipe upgrade. That should, in theory, break down the nickel chloride, just as soon as we get rid of the mercury filter there. And then let's make our highly requested pipe upgrade. It is missing some netherite and we're actually out of netherite scrap of all things. And so um, we are gonna have to quickly grab our uh, scrap maker and put it in here. Take this out, uh, clear out our inventory just a little bit because it's full of all kinds of junk currently. And then let's give that a bit of a, a swift acceleration. Fantastic, we can then swap that back to coal, drop all of these into the system, and then we can just use those to craft up a bunch of netherite ingots. Two stacks should be enough. I don't think we're gonna need more than that for the remainder of the series there. Over here, let's go ahead and request that pipe upgrade. Not a thousand of them, just one is fine. Drop that in over here. Again, we're gonna filter this one for chlorine, so extract, upgrade, Add to the whitelist chlorine, submit. Uh, we can take the nickel out. We can take out the four extra uh, mercury singularities there. Wait, did I only make four? No, no, we already have five. We've got nine now. Okay, perfect. Then we can eject the excess. And there we go. Nice. Okay, cool. So in that case, all we need to do now is get the remaining cactus green, which is actually called green dye. Drop all of that into here. Let's accelerate you. like that, and let's get all of these in, nice and quick. Could probably do with a, a draw upgrade on this guy, because he seems to have filled up very fast. Uh, but there we go, eight chlorine singularities are done. You love to see it. That's gonna go down right about there. 
And so now it's just the tricky three, which are Krypton, Fluorite, and Helium. So Helium-wise, how long... Or how much do we have? We're going to take... I don't want to apply a filter there. I don't know what I just filtered for. Uh, whatever it is, take it away. But we have got two stacks of Helium there. We're going to have another two here. And we're going to have a final two here and here. So if I dump all the Helium into the system, we currently have probably nowhere near enough Helium. 750. We're getting there slowly but surely. But it is going to take a little while here to get all of that helium. The fluorite is going to be a little easier in that we do have 506 actual fluorite here. And you can use this fluorite in the making of the element fluorite. So um, if we were to take this and break it down, each one gives us two fluorite. So we have approximately 1,000 fluorite ready to go. So we only need half as much of that as we do of the other two, the helium and the krypton. But uh, for the helium and krypton, it's just a case of waiting until these are full at 64. And then once they're full, taking them out, dropping in one again to get them going and just repeating that process until we have 2,500 of the uh, helium, the krypton and the fluorite. All right. So a little while later, uh, we didn't end up using the fluorite, but we have 2,700 fluorite. We have 2,500 helium and we have 2,500 Krypton. We're all good to go. So we should, in theory now, be ready to wrap this up. Let's grab as much Krypton as we can humanly carry. And let's also, we can get rid of these pipes for now. Let's grab our time in a bottle as well. And then if we can do it a little bit more Krypton. Let's eject what's in here, which is going to be easier said than done. And then let's start filling this up with the Krypton. We'll then accelerate this to be nice and fast. 32X is probably a good sweet spot there. Let's grab the rest of the Krypton if we can carry it, which we almost can if we get rid of the chlorine here. And then we should be able to get these five Krypton singularities nice and quickly. Fantastic. We can then eject, get rid of the Krypton, and then do the exact same thing with the helium. Good stuff. And there are the helium singularities. Again, we can eject, drop those in. And the final piece of the puzzle is the fluorite. Let's do the exact same thing one more time here. And boom, there is what I believe to be our final singularity. So let's go ahead and drop in the Krypton here, the Helium here, and the Fluorite here. And boom, chat, we have five of the ultimate singularities. So now let's craft, let's, <laughs> let's grab our five ultimate ingots and let's see if we can't finally craft this creative supply upgrade. All we need is the creative essence. We have to deploy an encrypted ingot on a nether star. That is fine. Let us go ahead. You know what? We'll hijack. Can I hijack this? If I give you an encrypted ingot, can I then just put a nether star, which we don't have in our system. They are currently over on the roof. Let's go and grab one of these. Get uh, poisoned by the wither there for hopefully the last time. Let's drop this onto the belt if we can get it on there. And if I take this away and this away, that should work, I think. Oh, it needs to be a depot. Interesting. Okay, let me take this and let me take this. And then I guess let's hijack this if we can. Can I swap this for this? I totally can. And then I can drop this on here. And that hopefully, there we go. You'll love to see it. All right, let's take this. Let's go over to here. And let's make this happen, shall we? So we need this guy in the middle. I think the rest of this is shapeless. So one, two, three, four, with one, two, three, four on all the pedestals. This does require power. That's fine. We can go ahead and uh, steal this guy because we don't need any more singularities. And boom, this is good. You'll know it's working when you get these particle effects. And it does require 6.9 million redstone flux, and it only takes 500 per tick. So it might take a little while. So let's just give it a quick uh, time in a bottle here. So long as we're not using more than 100,000 RF per tick, we are fine. The, uh, the particle effect is very cool, but that would have taken forever if we, uh, if we didn't accelerate it to 128 times the default speed. That is madness. But now that we have the creative supply upgrade, we can craft the omnidirectional hopper. This is from Pneumaticraft. Once we have the omnidirectional hopper, we can place this down anywhere in the world. Let's place it down above this chest. Uh, it does go down, by the way, even though it looks a little odd. Then let's go ahead and drop in the creative supply upgrade. And now what we can do, we can take our ultimate ingot, put that in, and boom, we have ultimate, uh, unlimited ultimate ingots. Let's make this a little bit faster, shall we? Look at that. 
the ultimate ingots are coming in. Let's do the same thing with the ultimate singularities here. I don't know if we could do both at the same time. We can't. It only does one, not the other. But look at that. We have unlimited ultimate ingots. So uh, what we should do now is we should uh, go ahead and one more time here. So it wasn't the last time. We're going to get one more nether star because we do need to get one more. Oh, no, it was the last time we got attacked by the wither. You love to see it. So we're going to put one more nether star down over here. We're going to grab one more encrypted ingot. We're going to stick you up there. Plop that on there. Take the rest of those off. Grab it. We're going to make one more of these because once we've made one more, then we can just use the, the first one that we made to make infinite more, right? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Again, let's go up to... We'll go up to 256 because that's still not 100,000 RF per tick. That is absolute madness in terms of the amount of particles that are showing there. But it is done. We have managed to burn down to 12 hours and 55 minutes. Um, for reference, we've been live for four hours. So uh, we had 20 hours. We've burned seven of them plus the extra four. So we've burned like 11 hours worth of time out of this time in a bottle within the last few hours. But now... We can take this, we can put this in here, and now we have an infinite number of creative supply upgrades. So we can take those creative supply upgrades over to our smithing table, which I thought was in there, but I guess is actually in this back corner here. So we need a tank, that's for sure, from create. We'll take this, we'll put this in over here with the upgrade, boom, creative fluid tank. We've got an infinite amount of any fluid that we want. We need a blaze kick, which thankfully we have an infinite Number of, we'll take one of those, drop that in over here, boom and boom. There is our creative blaze cake. Uh, in theory, we could make a few of these and use these on uh, these guys to keep them going forever. So you can just right click these and they will, actually, I don't think it uses the cake. So I think you can just right click it. Yeah, like that. So now these don't actually require the blaze cake. They'll just work forever um, without it. But again, at this point in time, it's not particularly useful. Then there's the creative motor, which does require the electric motor, which is actually going to be a little bit of work because we need to reset up our mechanical crafting. We'll do that in just a second. And then we also need an ultimate energy cube, which I don't think our system knows how to make. It knows how to make the basic energy cube. But let me quickly teach it the other crafts to get to the ultimate energy cube, and then let's see if we can request it. So advanced, elite, and ultimate. Let's get all three of those in here. We're running very low on crafting space, but then can I just request an ultimate cube? I cannot. We're missing four atomic alloys and one steel casing. So atomic alloys, we might just be able to make. We need reinforced alloy, which we have. So I say I need four of these, and then we need uh, refined obsidian. So that is refined obsidian dust. Let's go and put all of those into the old metallurgic infuser. I do believe that we can enrich the refined obsidian dust first and then put it into the uh, enriching factory here, then craft up the atomic alloys. And then for the steel casing, this one we can now do with the metallurgic infuser. This one's redstone and steel. Do we have steel ingots? We do. Fantastic. Let's get a block of steel. Let's get some redstone. And then let's go ahead and drop that in here. So we'll do Redstone, steel, steel casing, and then can I get the energy cube? And boom, there is our ultimate energy cube. Let's craft that again with another one of these creative supply upgrades. And boom, there is our creative generator. That's infinite power available for our base. And so now we just need three, six, nine, twelve mechanical crafters, which I think we should have. We do. We have 21 of them. We need to set these up in the correct pattern here. So let's do one, two, three. And then let's type in motor. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The middle one is a little wider like this. And then is it just one at the top? It is. It's like that. Okay, so that's the layout. Now we just need six brass sheets. I'm going to bookmark the motor here. We should have those. We totally do. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Fantastic. We then need three copper spools, which I don't think is an item we've made in the series thus far. Copper spools are made with the engineer's wire cutters and copper plates, which we should have. Uh, how many? Oh, you can also make them from create as well, but these ones do work. Uh, so we needed uh, three copper spools, right? Yeah, so we need uh, 12 of these. We then need uh, three empty spools, which require iron plates, which we have none of. Interesting. Let me quickly grab a stack of iron, and let's, for the last time, go ahead and drop that 
onto the depot over here. We actually stole the uh, mechanical press a little while back to make our blaze cakes. We no longer need blaze cakes, so we can move this back over to here. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and craft up those spools. 16 is more than enough. Then let's craft up the three copper spools. Fantastic. Let's get those into the wall here. One, uh, that's not right at all. One, two, three. And then what are we missing? We need andesite alloy, capacitor, iron stick. Iron stick is just iron. The capacitor sounds like it's going to be more difficult, and it is. We need a zinc plate of some persuasion. That is fine. Let's grab one of our 352 zinc ingots, and let's drop that over onto our metal press. Fantastic. Let's get that capacitor. Kapow. Drop that down. I think it was in the middle. I think it was like this and like this. And then the only thing we're missing is the andesite alloy. And then once we have that in, all we have to do is actually connect this up using our cogwheels. So... Actually, we can just do this and this. We do need to make sure these all connect at some point, which they now do. Fantastic. And then let's grab one of the spare barrels, put that down right about here. And by here, I mean here. Get rid of this excess barrel, connect these up like so. And bada bing, bada boom, it didn't work. <laughs> what, did I, uh, what did I mess up here? So we got three brass here, three brass here. Oh, the capacitor and the stick were the other way around. The stick goes in the middle. It does. That is wild. I would have thought the capacitor went in the middle, but uh, thank you, chat. Nonetheless, let's do uh, one, two, three, and then let's put that andesite alloy back at the top. Second time's the charm. There we go. Take the electric motor, craft that with our fourth creative supply upgrade, and boom. And so now, chat, we just have to make the final product. So for this, uh, we actually don't need too much. This one is the only one we've not made. We need the uh, infinity pipe upgrade. This should be fine. Again, netherite we have, and of course we can make more should we need to using the omnidirectional hopper if this chest isn't already full, which it kind of is. We then do also need though some manulin, which we don't have, <laughs> which is a little bit of a pain because manulin requires uh, blazing blood to smell or soul lava. People did mention soul lava to me a little while back. You require soul saplings and soul saplings can be made. So you can grow those into soul logs, but then I think the, uh, the soul logs might also require blazing blood. It's not the end of the world. Let me quickly check if that is the case. Never mind. It turns out you can use the alloy kiln from immersive engineering to make the manulin here. I don't think we have any kiln brick. We don't, but it's super easy to make. It's just regular brick and sandstone. So uh, I'll bookmark this. Sand we have. So we can make some sandstone here. I think any sandstone will do. And then clear we should have, so we can just quickly smelt that down into brick. And you only need eight of these, two, four, six, and oh, we're missing just one piece of sandstone. Thankfully, we do have this guy over here. So let's make some more sandstone. One more is all we need. That gets us the eighth kiln brick. You can then put this down like so. That makes uh, the multi-block. You just need to actually verify the multi-block using an engineer's hammer, like so. At which point, we can just take some, I think it's cobalt and uh ancient not ancient debris and netherite scrap we don't have any netherite scrap because we turned it into uh into netherite but as per usual uh, we probably don't need any more coal in there now that is fine again we could take the blaze cake and just uh give these guys some extra heat there that's going to give us even more power for the boiler that we again do not need at this point in time but back over here let's do this and this and of course that does require some kind of fuel let's drop some coal in the bottom like that I don't think you can accelerate this. But not that we need to. Once we have uh, just one manulin, we can then go over to our omnidirectional hopper, take the netherite out, put the manulin in, give that a little bit of an accelerate. And boom, we've got all the manulin that we're ever going to need. And so let's head on back over to our ultimate crafting table and see if we can't make the creative pipe upgrade. We have everything. Fantastic. You'll love to see it. Let's also go ahead and dump some of this stuff out of our inventory here. What else do we need to make uh, this guy? We need two creative supply upgrades. We have that. We need uh, more creative essence. I did, did I make extra creative essence or did I just use it to make another? I think I just used it, right? So I think I need to get 
get another nether star? Yeah, I think I had to use it, right? So let's take this. Thankfully, this is like the easiest part of the whole endeavor to make. Let's take this. The base is a little cramped, but then we can just do this as soon as we do this, get rid of this, get rid of this. And ideally, there we go. And there we go, that gets us our creative essence. This time we'll take that creative essence and place it once again into the omni-directional hopper like that. Uh, we do need some space here, that's fine. We only need four of those, you love to see it. I think that we might be good to go. What are we missing? We're missing the creative, so the creative energy cube is not, oh, I see, we need to make an ultimate energy cube and craft it with the pipe upgrade. So we actually need a second infinity pipe upgrade, that's fine. Again, we can duplicate that with the omnidirectional hopper, so we'll put that back in here, take this out, get a few of those, request another ultimate energy cube, which does require yet another steel casing and yet four more atomic alloys. Okay, that makes sense. Let's grab another block of steel. I think we should still have enough redstone in here to make another one of these. We totally do. We're then gonna dump out the excess redstone. We're gonna grab some of that reinforced steel. Uh, we're gonna grab some of that enriched obsidian that we put in earlier, drop that back in, with some of the reinforced alloys. Fantastic, we'll take those, and then we should be able to request our ultimate energy cube. Boom, it is done. This time we'll combine this up with the pipes upgrade that gets us the creative energy cube, but it is empty, so you actually maybe can't use it for power, but it doesn't matter anyway, we don't need the power. Back over here, do we have everything we need? I think it's just netherite now, maybe? It is indeed just netherite. How much netherite do we have in the system? We got over 300, two stacks. It's gonna do it for us. Chat, we need one singular encrypted matter. Boom, boom, and boom. Chat, we have... Done it. <laughs> so, this is the final step to get out. If you'll give it here through the book, I'll see what I can do to get you out. But I've got some bad news. Things aren't the same. I'm going to see what I can do to find you a better home. Let's get you out first, and I'll see what I can do after that. Oh, yeah, BT dubs, I'm Wolf, your keeper. And after all that, you're going to hear more from me. End of file continues in to be continued. Chat. That is encrypted. Oh, that's almost, almost encrypted. There is one final thing that I need to do because I said that I would do it. I didn't even need the blaze cake. Like you don't even need these four items, which is wild to me. Um, I don't know why the um, creative energy cube is there. I feel like the blaze cake should be there because that's the fourth item that you need. But either way, that's done. We can claim our reward. The final thing is the thing that I've been saying that I'm gonna do to make our lives easier and for aesthetic reasons, for the entirety of the pack, and that is that I'm gonna build the periodic table of elements out of storage drawers, because we have the capability to do it, we have almost all of the elements, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna crack, I said I'd do it, I said many, 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 many times that I would do it, and so uh, real quick, let's grab 118 storage drawers, and then let's color coordinate them, and let's build the periodic table of elements out of storage drawers. All right, so we have the outline, of the periodic table here in the middle. I've made some uh, some pathways finally for our quote unquote courtyard that uh, didn't really ever get use out of it, but is here now. And so now we just need to fill this in with all of the elements starting with hydrogen. All right, and again, far too much time later, we have created every single element on the periodic table. We've placed every single one of those elements into the drawer. We actually haven't, I missed one element. I missed arsenic, we didn't have it when I went to make it, let me quickly grab some germanium, add one hydrogen to that germanium, and then let's drop that back at the table. Chat, we have done it. That is the full periodic table of elements. And with that, that is gonna wrap up this series on 
the encrypted underscore mod pack. Thank you very so much, everybody, for watching either on Twitch or on YouTube. Thank you uh, to Cryptic for making this mod pack. It's been a good time. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, a few bugs here and there, but for the most part, uh, I've enjoyed it tremendously. It's a good mod pack, especially given that it's, it's, uh, it's his first mod pack as well. It is uh, a tremendously good mod pack in that regard. Thank you for watching. Uh, I've enjoyed it. We didn't get as much use out of this base as I would have hoped, but we did manage to get everything completed. We completed the creative quest lines. We got to the end of file. We built our periodic table of elements. Um, I will put a link in the description to the uh, GOC Discord. In the GOC Discord will be a link to the file that I was sent by Cryptic, the maker of the pack, that makes these singularities easier if you're watching this and you want to do the same as well, because I think the initial... I think this is a good level of difficulty that we did here. I think requiring 10,000 of every single one of these uh, elements or compounds in order to make the singularities and you need to make five of them so having to make 50,000 of every single one of those is just insane it is doable but it's just needlessly tedious in my mind i think this is a much better middle ground in my opinion but with that i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this series there real quick actually before we go uh, chat is asking me to right click the finished file the finished program and there we go returning to reality you won gg I actually don't know if we go anywhere or if that is just, it's just nighttime now as opposed to being daytime and it said you won. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this series there.